Yes, we're here. I'm Meredith Morakovitz alongside Clint Frazier. Clint, how are you doing? How have you been spending your time? Uh, you know, I just got home to Atlanta today. Um, I've been spending the last couple of weeks in Tampa with some of the guys that were still down there and just trying to find things to do. And a lot of things we did were play Xbox and, and go to the field. I mean, it was very limited stuff, but we made the most of it while we could. Were there still a lot of guys that were working out there? Um, there were a few, you know, it was me, DJ LeMayhew, Stanton, Judge, um, Sevy, three rehab guys, you know, Wade, Ford, a couple, occasionally Glaber and Niggy. So, you know, there was, a, there was a large amount of people that showed their faces over the time being, but only a few would come in at a time. Was it odd? I know Marcus Tim said the other day that he's wearing gloves. He's doing. Was it just odd the way that that everything transpired and the social distancing, the way you guys had to try to work out? Yeah, it was. It was weird, you know, because you started to see people take more precaution on things that they probably wouldn't. And and for instance, like, you know, every day we have a couple multiple different BP throwers that throw throughout the day, so you know, they started to be cautious of what baseballs they were throwing. And, and one bin seemed to be dedicated to one BP guy and, and stuff. And, you know, it, it, it was unique, but, you know, we still found a way to get the work that we needed done. And, and, and it was good. I mean, it was, I think it was especially good for guys like myself, guys like Tyler Wade and, and Mike Ford guys that are, you know, still getting their feet wet and trying to, trying to make the team and, you know, get the chance to be around guys like DJ LeMayhew and, and Judge and Stanton and just, really reap the benefits of the one-on-one -on -one or the, the smaller groups, the group settings to be able to get stuff done. Hey, you mentioned making the team. You were poised to probably make that roster uh, on opening day this year. I imagine that's a, a tough pill to swallow. Obviously, this is all bigger than baseball. There are crazy things going on in the world right now. But uh, for you in particular, that had to be an absolute bummer. Yeah, you know, I mean, I figured if I didn't make it, it would be caused by a player and not by a, a virus. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm still positive. I still think that, that I did some good things in spring training. And, you know, obviously guys will, will have the chance to come back and, and be healthy whenever the season does start, if it starts. So I'm just hoping that I put myself in a good enough, a good enough position to be able to, you know, contribute more than I did last year, whatever that may be. Now you mentioned the video games, and I know there is an intense Madden tournament going on right now, spearheaded by Tommy Canely. How are you doing in the tournament, Clint? All right, so last year was, uh, it was, it was different. It was difficult. Not last year, last season. So I, I didn't have my PlayStation with me, so I had got to pick a team that was drafted by the computer. And ultimately, I wanted the best quarterback, and who better than Lamar Jackson? So I. I took Lamar's team. It was not star-studded by a lot of offensive threats. So I've been joking around with a lot of guys in the group text and saying, you know, I sold my soul to the devil and sold everyone on my defense. There is no, no players on my defense left. I'm running the most powerful offense right now. I have the number one rated offense in the league, but almost the dead last rated defense. Um, it's a lot like watching Big 12 uh, – college football you know like guys just going out there and just scoring a lot of points but I'm having fun I'm, I'm seven and one right now I'm leading my division and I think I got a chance to uh to get a first round by in the playoffs this year maybe upset Ben Heller in the first round exciting we know Ben Heller and Tommy Canely went out at, for the championship last year are there any other ringers mm -hmm. or any guys that are emerging as very good players in that Madden league to be honest, like Ben is still like, all right, so Ben, Ben's somebody that you have to watch out for. If you don't play your best game, he's going to embarrass you. Like he's going to shove it down your throat the entire time. <laughs> Whether you're down by 40 and the game is over, like there could be six seconds left and that guy's still going to try to score. So those guys are the ones that you have to watch out for because because it's hard to show up to the field the next day and look some of these players in the face and be like, yeah, like I got beat by 60 last night. Hey, uh, one thing we've learned about you over the years, you love you some sneakers, as do I. I set this up just for you, Clint, just for you. I had to put some I of my selection it. out there. So uh, do you have all your sneakers with you in Atlanta? Do you want to show me a couple of your favorite pairs? Yeah, you know, um, 
I will say that my favorite pairs aren't with me because they're they're on their way back from Tampa, but I still have I still have a a good collection sitting here, but as far as my my favorites go and my most expensive pairs, they're not they're not with me, but maybe it's a blessing that I don't have to show up how much money I might have spent on a few of these pairs. <laughs> So, it kind of turns into an addiction, though, right? Once you start, you're like, I need that pair. I need that pair. This pair goes with this outfit. I need this pair. It's it's shameful. I got a few for you here. I'll show you a few. Sweet. Um, nice. So, I mean, obviously, I just bought this house recently, and I'm I'm working on this shoe closet. But, I mean, for the most part, my best pair sitting here is probably, these are called the, the Off-White MCA um, Vir or they're they made they're made by Virgil Abloh. These are called the uh, the the Grim Reaper Virgil Off White Blazers. Um, these are a hard pair to come by. Obviously, they they're they're pretty expensive, which is why I probably shouldn't have worn them for the first time in the dugout in AAA this year. That probably would upset some people. Um, on my feet right now, I have the uh, the the Travis Scott lows. This is probably my favorite low. I like to wear the pink laces with them. I don't have any particular reason why I just think it looks cool um here's another pair I mean this is another one of the harder ones that could come by these are these are like the Miami based Jordan ones so like inside of them they have 305 and an MIA so it's just it's, it's it's just designed for the the Miami Hurricanes but you know I don't have like I said I don't have every pair in here but I have some I have some cool ones I mean one of my favorite pairs are these so if i have the other pair okay here we go so this pair is how this shoe starts but if you take rubbing alcohol you can change it to that color so oh, wow. That's pretty cool. in baltimore in baltimore this year i was taking the paint off of the shoes a lot during before the game just kind of playing around with it i mean you you, you learn new things as you go i mean i didn't know going into it that you could take the paint off of all these shoes and make them whatever color you want so if you look right here like that's the black check on it and then i had it changed to pink so it, it's it's kind of cool it's a it's a cool little touch that comes with the the sb dunks um i don't know i mean these are this is another version of the blazers that these are the serena williams pair oh so, i saw those i tried to get probably, myself a yeah you a pair of those it was impossible <laughs> you should, yeah maybe we should maybe we should set something up during the season and we'll go find you a pair i'm That'd sure i can get you a pair um this is so th this is one of my favorites though these are the nigel sylvester ones these are the ones that i wore really first against the red Sox this year this is where it kind of all kind of all started and i think that you know the the way that they look they look terrible right they look they look like they're beat up like 15 year old shoes but the shoe is designed after a biker and it's supposed to just be like he you know he's out riding he scuffed them up so it's it's a pretty cool thing i mean nothing too too crazy but you know i like them you want to see my favorite pair i i would like to i i want to see what you're working with you've seen these a hundred times at the ballpark i've seen them i've seen them but they're good they're good you. And then these are a little bit different. I don't wear these often, but I like these too. I like those. So where do you get your shoes then? Where, what is your go-to? I go, a lot of it's online. I'll go okay. to Goat often. Sometimes I just get them straight off the Nike website. And there's another, oh, I can't think of the website that I use. There's one other website that I go to. But it might I, be StockX. I don't think mm. it's Stock. I gotta check that out. I gotta check out. That's okay. where I should be going. Maybe. I mean, look, like, I don't want to influence this addiction anymore on anyone else, but StockX is a really good website to find some stuff on. Well, I have time, so I have time to browse the internet now, so I'll check it out. Um, yeah. Any message you'd like to give to those who are on the front lines and are putting their life on the line to try to save others? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'd just be more than likely echoing a lot of the same things that people have said, where you know, the gratitude that we have towards the people that are going out there and, and, you know, trying to make a difference in somebody's life that might be going through something is, is something that resonates with me because I do have a friend that she, she's going through her final stages of her residency in San Diego and, and she is sick right now. And she's, she's, she hasn't gotten the results back, but it seems, you know, 
like she could have the virus right now. And, and it, it resonates more because she's in an area where she can be more sick, but she's or more likely to be sick. So it, 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 it upsets me to see that she's going through it. It upsets me to see that other first responders, you know, do get sick and, and there are consequences that come with it. But, you know, at the end of the day, we also be very grateful for the stuff that they do to ensure that when something does happen like this, that we get through it and, and, you know, we, we move on from it, but, you know, I, I can't say thank you enough to, to all of them out there and, and, you know, just keep doing what you can do because it's all appreciated. Well, on that note, Clint, thank you so much for the time. I hope you and your family remain safe during this time. Thank you very much. You too.